Namaste. The concept of chakras is a very very interesting subject and when it comes to healing ourselves or healing somebody else, the best way is to heal the chakras. What are the chakras? Many people may know all about it but there may be some who are not aware of the theory of chakras. Chakras are energy centers in our body and at this point I can say this with a lot of pride that the very concept that we have chakras in our body is something which our ancient Siddhas of India they are the people who understood this first and uh, told this to the whole world and today the whole world has accepted this concept that we have chakras in our body and the very word chakra it is an Indian word if you think about it and of course in the world they call them chakras and they also call them power centers but we call them chakras what are these chakras chakras are energy bodies each chakra is just outside the body but it is connected to the body and it is like a flower blooming out of our body and the theory tells us that there are 720 chakras in our body and they are of different sizes we have the big ones the major chakras the medium sized chakras the minor chakras and also the micro chakras very very tiny but even the major chakras are not visible to the naked eye when you look at a person you don't see their chakras unless you are clairvoyant but they are there every human being has these chakras what are these chakras they are energy bodies and that's why we don't we are not able to see them but they are there connected to the body and uh, though we have 720 chakras it is most important to understand the seven major chakras which are the big ones and they are like the team leaders and uh, the other chakras work under them as teams and they are all of course interconnected also and uh, it is very interesting to see how these chakras work the chakras as I said each chakra is like a flower blooming out of the body and uh, these energy bodies keep rotating clockwise anti-clockwise clockwise anti-clockwise anti and it is uh, said that when they move in the clockwise direction they bring in a lot of prana from the external world into the body and when they move in the anti-clockwise direction the used up prana from the body is thrown out this is just like our breathing and it is as important as our breathing is for our being alive and when the chakras are rotating clockwise and anti-clockwise and they bring in the fresh prana and throw out the used prana when this function is happening properly a human being is very comfortable both physically and mentally this is the most interesting part the chakras do not govern only the physical aspects in the body they also govern the mental aspects the psychological aspects and that is more interesting for us because we always talk about the mind and here what happens is as the chakra keeps rotating it keeps doing its work uh, bringing in the fresh prana throwing out the used prana and this uh, continues day after day but the prana which comes from the external world is not all positive good prana sometimes there is also negative energy around us and some negative prana tries to come in and the chakras have a filter which is known as a web the filter tries to keep away the negative energies it tries to stop them from entering and to, a, to some extent it succeeds also but sometimes when a lot of negative energy comes in even the chakra cannot manage it's like when you try to filter tea at home you make tea you filter it so when the tea leaves fall into the filter to up to some extent the tea keeps getting filtered but when there is too much then sometimes you have to you know tap it or shake it to make the tea filter otherwise it gets clogged over there similarly when there is too much negative energy a chakra can get clogged it may not be able to throw out that negative energy then what happens is it becomes heavy and the movement becomes very slow and that is when we have problems both physically and mentally psychologically actually so many of our emotions are governed by the function of the chakras and when the chakras are clear and bright and big when they grow big then those aspects governed by that particular chakra or those chakras will be very good for a human being but if a chakra is a little small it has not opened up well it is not bright it has got a lot of negativity then those aspects which that chakra governs 
they become a little problematic for the person both physically and psychologically. And uh, we have a class called Chakra Meditation where I speak a lot about the theory of the chakras and it is very very interesting to understand not only the physical uh, aspects which the chakra governs but also the psychological aspects. You will be amazed to understand that uh, everything that we, we think is very important in life is because of the chakras also. So one way of healing a human being, there are many different ways of course, but one very effective way of healing a human being both physically as well as psychologically is by healing the chakras. So let me give you one example of how a chakra can govern the psychological aspect of a person. I will talk about the Muladhara chakra because this is the basic chakra. In, in English it is called the basic chakra or the root chakra but in the Indian language it is known as the Muladhara and the Muladhara means the base and this chakra is located at the back side of the body at the, at the point where the spinal cord ends at the base of the spine we say. So it's at that root chakra level so it's also called the root, uh, root chakra Muladhara chakra is there at just where the spine ends at the back at the back of the body behind the body and this chakra it governs many aspects in the physical body like the muscular system the skeletal system the blood pressure of a person the quality of the blood and many other things are governed by this uh, chakra physically but we are uh, going to talk more about the psychological aspect because we are more uh, keen to understand that and here the very survival instinct in every human being is governed by the Muladhara Chakra. What do we mean by survival instinct? You know, every day we are not fighting for our life. The word survival means fighting for your life, for your livelihood or for life. But uh, if you think about it, that aspect of the mind that I have to live, I have to succeed, I have to do things properly, I have to impress people or I have to go move forward in life. All this comes only from the Muladhara Chakra and all these aspects will definitely help a person to survive well in this life. And also something like presence of mind. When the Muladhara Chakra is well developed for a person, his presence of mind is very very good. You will find some people are able to always come up with the best answers even in a group of people. But uh, some people are not able to, sometimes the presence of mind is less. So in a group of people when you are chatting, uh, somebody says something, some, you don't know what to say and you just uh, keep quiet and then you come back home and start thinking, oh, I should have answered like this. So it's not that we do not know, the knowledge is there, the inputs are there but the presence of mind may be lacking and that comes from the Muladhara Chakra. When the Muladhara is well developed, that little bit of aggressiveness to move forward, to do things in the right way, to succeed, everything comes from there. And uh, Another aspect of this, if you look at it, earning money, capacity to earn money is today what we call survival. Earlier it was survival means uh, being able to be alive, you know, protecting yourself from animals, protecting yourself from any other forces in the world. But today it's not like that. Today survival means being able to make a lot of money. That is what a survival is measured by the money that a person makes. So that way if you see, that instinct to take the right decisions in life, to take the right career in life, choose the right career in life and if you are doing business then to take the proper decisions to do whatever is required to make that business successful. It comes from the Muladhara Chakra. If you are in a career, if you are working somewhere also, being able to move forward in that career, being able to impress people, to do whatever is right which will help you to move forward, all that comes from the Muladhara Chakra. And uh, even for a person who's, who's at home, let, let's say a homemaker, a lady who may not be the breadwinner of the family but still that little aggressiveness is there to get up early in the morning, that uh, activity, active feeling to do some exercise, to do things properly and to complete all the work in time and keep everything properly in place. Every, all that instinct, you know, that is what makes a human being successful. We all know that. And that instinct comes from the Muladhara Chakra. Now, conversely, if you see, this, all this that I mentioned now, it happens when the Muladhara is very well developed and uh, bright and big. Then definitely the person makes a lot of money, the person gets very good marks, the person is very successful in life. No matter what he does, it always works out well. 
But then if the Mooladhara Chakra is not well developed, that can also happen for a lot of people. For some reasons, reasons are many, but supposing that Chakra is not well developed, then physically there can be a lot of problems related to the blood pressure, related to the muscular system, skeletal system and many other things. But psychological aspect, if you see, if the Mooladhara is not well developed, then the person loses that willingness to work, that aggressive is not, aggressiveness is not there. And uh, at an extreme stage, what happens is the person doesn't even want to live. People commit suicide only when the Mooladhara Chakra becomes very small. That very intent to live, that very desire to live also disappears. So that happens when the Mooladhara is very small. In my counselling sessions, when somebody is very depressed and they talk about their problems, and sometimes they have suicidal thoughts also. Then, uh, I, of course, I speak to them for some time, but talking doesn't help much because um, uh, during the session they are okay, but afterwards then their own thoughts come back because the Mooladhara is not well developed. So I just take them into a meditative state and heal them a little bit and open up the Mooladhara Chakra and that makes a very big difference for them. Their thought forms change completely and they start saying, why should I die? I can live, I can uh, do many things, I can succeed. So the Mooladhara Chakra, I have spoken just about one chakra. There is a lot more about this chakra and many, all the others. So in this class chakra meditation, you will understand what a chakra does for you physically and psychologically and you will understand how to make it better for yourself. That is the most important thing. So try and join us for this class if you can. And the theory of chakras is amazing, God's creation. We only have to just understand it with folded hands and that can happen in this class and the knowledge that you will get about chakras will help you to not only succeed in life but also to heal yourself and to heal others in a very very effective way. So let's meet there. See you.